Game shows are almost always a hoot to watch. There's this weird mixture of schadenfreude and hope for the people who are playing them. You feel incredibly jealous and are really quick to point out when they're being morons or laugh when they fail. But at the same time, you can't help but cheer for people who you find yourself liking. It should be no surprise that, in an effort to bring this feeling of tensilation to the masses, plenty of famous game shows have been adapted into home media. It started with board and card games, but once electronics started to explode forward, it's obvious that they were going to take these shows and turn them into video games. Almost every major console has had at least one adaptation of a game show. But as time has gone on and technology has improved, these adaptations have become less and less interesting, looking cheaper and cheaper and playing worse and worse. Back in the early days of gaming, these things were more of an exciting novelty, but that doesn't mean they're necessarily good. Now, when I was growing up, one of my favorite game shows to watch was always Jeopardy, though this was mostly because it came on right before the TGIF sitcom block on ABC. And with that poorly written introduction out of the way, let's actually talk some NES Jeopardy games. Why are we talking about games instead of game today? Well, that's mostly because the three that we're looking at today were all basically the same game, all made by the same company, in fact. And as such, I felt it was appropriate to just get them all out of the way at once. So, yeah, here we go. The four games in question are Jeopardy, Jeopardy the 25th Anniversary Edition, Jeopardy Junior Edition, and Super Talking Jeopardy, which is the only one of the four I don't own, so we're not going to cover it here. Interestingly, while all four of these games were published by Game Tech, a company that released many game show adaptations for consoles throughout its life, these three particular games were developed by Rare. Yeah, the same Rare that had some of the best SNES and N64 games in existence. Of course, this was back during their work for hire period, when their output was mostly commissioned work for companies like Game Tech and, more infamously, LJN. They might have had some really well-beloved original classics released during this time, like Battletoads and Snake Rattle and Roll, but for the most part, their NES output consisted of things like Who Framed Roger Rabbit and Beetlejuice. So given all of that, how does the NES version of Jeopardy stack up? Well, I will say that it's kind of hard to screw something like this up, so the games themselves aren't bad per se, but a part of me does feel that this is part of where Capcom got their inspiration for re-releasing Street Fighter over and over. Seriously, look at this. This is all three title screams for the game. And aside from the swirling text letting us know which particular edition we're looking at, they're all the same. That's going to be a running theme throughout this review, as all three games basically recycle the exact same assets, with a few minor changes here and there, the most glaring of which being the color scheme between the adult and junior editions. Good god that orange is burning my eyes. Anyway, let's start out on the actual gameplay. If you watched Jeopardy in the 80s and 90s, then you already know the format that this is going to take. Jeopardy is made up of three rounds, single, double, and final Jeopardy. In the single and double rounds, you're presented with five categories with five questions in each. Each question is worth a certain amount of money, with the top row being the least and the bottom being the most. The difficulty of the question is usually related directly to how much it's worth. When a category in question is chosen, a clue is presented and then the players buzz in and try to guess what the clue is talking about. If a player gets it wrong, they lose the amount of points that the question was worth instead of gaining it, and can't guess on the same question again. The person who gets the question right is the person who chooses the next square on the board. If no one answers the question before the time runs out, then the choice reverts to the last person who picked the question. Once all the questions are picked in a round, you progress to the next round and repeat. After the second round, you go to Final Jeopardy, which is a single question operating off of Double Jeopardy rules, in that you wager however much of your own score you want, then you try to answer the question. But any player who doesn't have a positive score can't participate. And after that, the game's over and whoever has the most money wins. It's a lot like life in that way. Okay, so that's how Jeopardy works in general, and as a representation of the television show, the game is just fine. It's honestly kind of hard to screw up a trivia game's format. No, what makes these games weird and kind of interesting is everything that makes it an electronic piece of entertainment. Like I mentioned before, all three of these games are basically the same, with the major differences being the questions asked and in the case of the Junior Edition, the gaudy color scheme. Seriously, all three of them use the exact same format for how they're set up and how they're operating, 
with only the most minimal of changes. It's the most blatant type of laziness. Say what you want about Capcom's constant revision of the Street Fighter games, and believe me, I could say quite a bit about it as I think it's a stupid practice in general, but Capcom actually made a lot of really significant changes with every revision of the game. It wasn't just adding new characters. Mechanics were tightened, characters were balanced, the game speed was touched up. Jeopardy on the NES? Same thing three times. I realize that's not a terribly fair comparison given the circumstances for each developer at the time. Rare was work for hire, a pretty tiny company, and was probably forced to release the games on a pretty strict timetable. Well, Capcom was a major third-party developer, but it's still an apt example of a good revision versus a bad revision. I mean, take a look at the 25th Anniversary Edition. Compare their title screens. Yes, that spinning anniversary logo is literally the only difference, and put the rest of the game side by side, you'd never be able to tell which version you're playing. Even the avatar designs are the same. And terrifying. Look at these things. I got no good choices here. Well, I guess I could play as Poindexter here, or Frisk from Undertale. Fine, whatever, I'll take what I can get. And they don't get any better when they're trying to show emotions when they get a question right or wrong. When it comes to questions, again, I can't tell the difference between the Ordinary Jeopardy or the 25th edition. You can choose your skill level at the beginning of the game, 1, 2, or 3, basically difficulty settings, but I didn't really notice a difference between the difficulty of the questions. Maybe it just affects how smart and aggressive the computer players are. Speaking of, you have the option to just not play against the computer if you want, which seems kind of stupid to me because if you don't have a second player to play against, you'd just be playing for a high score. And how sad do you have to be to go for a high score on Jeopardy? And cut back to me for derogatory implication, and there we go, there's the joke. Comedy is easy, folks. I will say that at least it keeps the tongue-in-cheek semi-humorous names for some of the categories and the clues that they are given, but the part where the game really starts to fall apart is in the question and answer mechanic. Now, of course, you can't really answer these questions quickly. You have to type everything in, and it's not exactly a smooth process. Thankfully, you're always given far more time than you need, and only during incredibly long answers did I ever have a problem putting in what I needed to. But entering the right answer is... annoyingly specific. The game has the problem of being very picky with what it considers a right answer. In the show, and in most trivia games in general, there's a certain margin of error that you're given while playing, where so long as you get close to the right answer, you still get the question right. These Jeopardy games, on the other hand, are very anal about what the answer is. There were plenty of times playing these games where I second-guessed myself despite knowing the correct answers because I wasn't sure how to phrase it so that the game wouldn't count it as wrong. This even cost me some easy points in Junior Jeopardy of all things. On a positive note, if the computer gets a question wrong, which honestly doesn't happen that often, They'll type in a bunch of gibberish, but will reveal a few of the correct letters to the answer, giving the actual players a clue as to what the answer is. And oh yeah, get a load of this. For Final Jeopardy, they even tell all the players who are not entering their answers to look away from the TV while the player is answering the question. That is the joy of the 80s, folks. You make do with what you have. But while you're thinking about your answer or typing it in, you have to listen to this. That's another thing that sucks about this game, the sound design. The main Jeopardy theme and think music are pretty good, I'll give it that. In fact, I actually think I prefer the 8-bit rendition to the actual music. Unfortunately for sound, that's about as good as it gets. Most of the time in this game, there is no music whatsoever, so the sound effects take precedent. While the correct or wrong answer jingles that play are okay and convey what they need to, everything else is ear grating at worst and just annoying at best. Especially the timer sound. Just imagine listening to this for a minimum of about 10 seconds at a time when a question is picked. Nope, don't want that, that's for sure. But of course, the biggest thing that these games suffer from is the same thing that all trivia and quiz games suffer from, and that's eventual dating. 
Most of the questions and categories are okay, actually, as there are some things that just don't change no matter how much time seems to pass. But now and then you come across a politics, pop culture, or even a science question that, in today's day and age, is either incredibly outdated or just flat out wrong. But you gotta think like a person from the 80s, so it's actually a bit of a challenge. Not the good kind, but it's there. These games are a minor novelty nowadays, and that's basically all they are. But they aren't bad per se. When it comes to actually emulating the feeling of Jeopardy on an older console, well, they do about as well as I would expect them to. And if you want to feel really stupid, the Ordinary Jeopardy or the 25th Anniversary have got you covered, but if you want to feel like a frickin' genius, just play the Junior Edition. Ooh, I'm on top of the world! If you want to get these games for yourself, for whatever reason, they're certainly not that expensive, about as cheap as an NES game in this particular economy can be right now. But I do recommend that you avoid my mistake and only get one of these games. As I pointed out numerous times in this review, all three of them are the exact same game. I do feel like these games have curiosities on their sides as well. I mean, this is a game that was produced by a beloved developer before they were so beloved, which kind of makes them fascinating to me. It's a nice little peek at their humble beginnings before they became what we all know them as. And I'm sure we'll be covering them again at a later date, as well as game tech, especially since the crappy game show adaptation was pretty much game tech's bread and butter for both the NES, SNES, and Sega Genesis when they were still around. But for now, let's move away from crappy NES games. The market on that front is kind of, you know, flooded. And let's move on to the next video. I'll see you all then.